What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinton. I'm your host. Today is a day that is a day. I, 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 don't, I don't know what day it is anymore. We recorded this I think our third podcast. We recorded a day, and I'm terrible about remembering what day it is. Whatever day it is, happy day to you. Probably either Friday or Monday. Uh, maybe even Thursday. Who knows? Anyway, point being, it's a daily NFL podcast. And we are somehow nominated for the third or fourth straight year for the best sports podcast category, the People's Choice Podcast Awards. We appreciate everything you guys do for us. I know you're always willing to go out of your way to help us out. We hope you do it again by helping us push through to the final round. To nominate Pick 6 as part of a, as a finalist, go to podcastawards.com slash at slash sign up and toggle down to the sports category, select Pick 6 Podcast, and in less than 60 seconds, you'll have hooked us up. We've included the link at the top of the episode description as well. If you don't feel like typing that into your browser, podcastawards.com slash at slash sign up. Go do it. Help us out. If we win, I'll get a tattoo. I'll get the tattoo that Wilson wouldn't get. All right. We're going to talk... Best NFL teams this century. Joining us to do so, senior NFL historian, senior CBS Sports NFL historian, Brian DiArto. What's up, buddy? How we doing? Hey, Will. I'm doing good, man. You're aging me with the senior stuff, but I guess I'll take, I guess it's better than the alternative, correct? You know? Well, I got, I got like, I scared a senior title like very early in my career in CBS, and I'm not sure why or how they decided to do that. But you know what? I wasn't going to ask any questions. They're like, do you want to, okay. want to make you senior? I was like, okay, sure, fools. I mean, I mean, thank you, boss people who did that. Um, <laughs> anywho, uh, we'll we'll debate. That. This is a fun exercise. So it's best NFL teams this century, meaning since 2000, 1999, not included, right? Obviously, right. starting right. with two thousand. And um, well, give me your and you go and look at it on the site. Um, the uh, the story is obviously on the site, and I know it was also on. You got heavy run on Instagram on the, on the CBS Sports HQ Instagram, which means you know it's a good story when they're like posting a bunch of social media stuff about it. Uh, who were some of the snubs, honorable mentions for you on this list, Diarder? I actually think the main one was probably the Buccaneers of twenty twenty. They're they're probably oh. the biggest snub. You know, when I actually review their, they have Tom Brady for starters. I mean, their their defense was loaded. They had a great run through the playoffs. They decimated the defending champions in the Super Bowl. I think this is where recency bias may have hurt them. I, You know, they haven't had time to age. And honestly, I, they were kind of an afterthought when I made the list. But, you know, they had a great, impressive playoff run. I guess the question I would ask you is, do you, do you hold COVID against them? Or do you think that's more of a benefit to them that they won that year? Because they had overcome the virus, but they also didn't have, you know, they went through Lambeau with basically nobody there. So I think that was my story yeah. historically. Yeah, and then they got because of the way that the timing worked. I believe they had people at the Super Bowl, right? I mean, like they got a home crowd at the Super Bowl, right? Or at least like a, some people were. Yeah, they definitely had people there because it's Florida. Um, you know, home foot advantage of the Super Bowl is pretty huge. I, I, don't know, I do think that like COVID, you get Tom Brady, and he probably violated like seventy different. Um, COVID rules and off-season workout rules with the way you know, he like snuck into a, 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 a like he they broke COVID protocols and like snuck into a like a, a, a like a, a, a park in Tampa like to throw around with Mike Evans and his boys. Um, you know, quarterback changing teams. You know, that's not easy in a COVID year and to 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 play as well as they did. They didn't even win the division. I think that I would hold that against them more maybe than COVID. Uh, just the fact that you know you would. You know, if the team's that great, you would think they would win the division. But Brady was awesome. You know, they won a ton of football games. Um, clearly, this is a, a team that is, you know, I mean, like, when it was, I didn't think they were going to win the title when the playoffs started because they had struggled against the Bears, the Saints, various other teams um, during the season, like elite, de better defenses. And when they had to play, I didn't have to play like New Orleans and Washington and Green Bay and the Kansas City, not like Green Bay, Kansas City, are elite, but like, I don't know. That, that was such a difficult run. Three straight road games and then the home game. I think that's a good call. It's like a team that it'll age better as we get further away from it, more than likely. Um, just because, it, but but I think it is like you say, recency bias. You don't want to think of them as a great team, like especially compared to you know, and, and not to I don't want to give away a team that's way down the list, but like you know, I mean, even like the the O nine Saints. I mean, I think in just in our head, we'd be like O nine Saints versus. 2020 bucks, you're like the, the Saints would smoke them, right? I mean, like, uh, and so yeah, I think I think that that's I think that recency bias. You're trying to get away from it. 
Um, and so that is perfectly fair. Now, maybe a better matchup would be like the number 10 team against the Bucks, the 2015 Carolina Panthers team that fell just short of winning the Super Bowl, clearly not a uh, requirement on this list for you. Uh, and I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, 015 Panthers were losing the next to last, it was the last week of the season, but next to last week of the season, they were undefeated. They still went 15 0, then 15 and 1, lose the Falcons, and um, of course, you know, play really well in the playoffs. Looked like, you know, heavy favorites against the Denver Broncos, and Von Miller and that defense just took over, and Peyton Manning and company did just enough. But like that Panthers team, with Cam winning MVP, the way that he played all season, with the minimal weapons they had, with the defensive players they had, if they win that Super Bowl, I mean, they'd probably move up this list a pretty decent amount, right? Oh, yeah. They, they're probably six or seven, maybe knocking on the door of top ten. I mean, only a handful of teams have gone through the whole gauntlet with, with just one loss. But, yeah, I mean, they had four turnovers against Denver in the Super Bowl, so they kind of beat themselves in that game. And, For sure. And I'm sure you would you can, you can you know, uh, allude to this or you would agree – that game was a lot closer than people remember. I mean, it was yes. 16 10, last possession. Carolina has a chance to win that game. So they were a touchdown drive away from winning that game. They kind of beat themselves, I think, in that Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they turned the ball over. They weren't ready for it. It's ironically kind of what the Seahawks did to the Broncos, um, you know, a few years earlier, where they just came out and smacked him in the face and they just didn't know how to deal with it. I think, you know, they arrived thinking, we're winning this game, we're winning this title, and it just didn't pan out, pan out the way that they wanted. Um, yeah, that happens to NFL teams, but but the 2015 Panthers, one of the most fun teams. We talked about this um, when we were talking about best quarterbacks of the best quarterbacks of all time, hmm. or best quarterback seasons of all time. I guess we were talking about. And I was like, I mentioned that 2015 Cam would probably be up there for me just because that 2015 season was, you know, it's just like, like yeah, just like three or four years into it at CBS. I mean, my the team I grew up watching is you know making it to the Super Bowl on this incredible run. You know, my, you know, just a kid and just been born. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a very memorable, fun season for me uh, that ultimately culminated in pretty massive disappointment and, and substantial financial loss on that game. Uh, <laughs> the uh, 2010 Packers hold a place in my heart as well. The uh, the champions that that went from you – know, there's the championship. Yeah, it's obviously the championship team, right? The, the wild card team, right? Because the 2011 was the team that was so great in the regular season and flopped in the playoffs. Uh, the 2010 – is sort of the it was really the you know Aaron Rodgers had I don't even he'd been kind of criticized like all right you know because you follow Brett Favre you're getting criticized and then you come into 2010 you're a wild card and it's like can Aaron Rodgers really win the big one and he just goes on this like you know incredible playoff run that, that culminates in a Super Bowl title uh, in Dallas and I think really an underrated Super Bowl you know uh, you know I think it again like you know it didn't come down to like the last kick or the last throw. But there was a massive touchdown pass from from, from Aaron Rodgers I think Greg Jen, to Greg Jennings, right? Yep. And um, and and they ultimately take down the Steelers. You know, I think that team is you know really kind of the set the stage for what we expected and what we got from Aaron Rodgers' career. Although maybe ultimately, in in somewhat cruel irony, it's it's uh, it, it's disappointment because as of now, still no second Super Bowl. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, in each loss was. They had they had six. They started eight and six that year and ran the table. Each loss was by single digits in two or in overtime. So, wow. so this is a team that when you compare it to eleven, they're very similar. Eleven, they just won many more of those close games. A couple other things I found interesting. We always think, as you said, Aaron Rodgers. We think Packers offense. That offense that year was tenth in scoring. Their defense was second in points allowed. So actually, their defense for a large stretch of the year was better than them. Even in that Super Bowl, what play do we remember? The pass to Jennings and then the Clay Matthews fumble of Mendenhall that kind of ended the Steelers comeback before it really got yep. going. And, and I think the biggest thing, I think you just mentioned Favre, my biggest takeaway from that season for Green Bay was they swept the Packers and essentially kind of ended Favre's career. Sw yeah, swept the Vikings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vikings, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I meant. Yeah, right, they yeah, swept yeah, the Vikings yeah, and made Favre look very old when the year before Favre beat them twice and, and I think the second time went into Lambeau and won. So And, near, yeah, and nearly was, went to this, nearly went and won the Super Bowl, if not for the, the Bounty Gate Saints. I mean, yeah, yeah, we'll, right. we'll talk about it in a minute. But that no, that's a great point. And you could make a case that this team, the 2010 Packers, I mean, extended Mike McCarthy's job in Green Bay by five years because he won that Super Bowl early on with Rodgers and probably kept Dom Capers around a long time too because that defense was good enough that nobody you – know, people finally started complaining a few years later when the defense was letting them down. But yeah, that defense was a turnover machine and, and very, very good. Charles Woodson, a, a monster. 
um, on that defense, Clay Matthews, of course. Uh, did they have BJ Raji there? I think they did. They right? did. They had BJ Raji. Yeah. yeah, that was a good defense. Really good defense. Oh, yeah, very good yeah. defense. Yeah, that's interesting. The, the one I hadn't even thought back. Like, I think I was too like overwhelmed by the fact that I was writing about football professionally somehow um, <laughs> to like realize that like those all the, the eight and six. You know, it was like they did jump in as a wild card, but we all knew they were good. I don't think we thought about the one score games quite as much. That's a great point. Number eight, the 2006 Indianapolis Colts. Peyton Manning's, of course, his only Super Bowl with the Colts, which, you know, if he doesn't pick up an extra one, I mean, that's kind of disappointing too, the fact that Peyton Manning only came away with one Super Bowl. Uh, but that 2006 Colts team, interestingly enough, I too, you know, we think about the defense, right, and how the Colts defense in Tampa too, with Tony Dungy, never that great. This team and the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs remind me a lot of each other because the offense was clicking. It was what you expected from these great quarterbacks. But the important thing was that the defense magically kind of came together and created turnovers and played well down the stretch to to help even out the 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 you know the way that this you know the, the, to balance out the scales for this team. And then they draw the you know a little luck of the draw. You get Rex Grossman to the Colts in you know in Fort Lauderdale or in uh, in Miami. Excuse me. I remember. Uh, Mike Freeman um, or Pete Prisco always talk about how the way that the press box at the old stadium was set up is that they were literally having to run because it was pouring down rain, which is just never happens in the Super Bowl. This is the Prince Super Bowl too, right? Where he played it played at halftime, but they right. had to run up underneath a um, like an overhang and hold their laptops and like bang out the stories in 06 because it was pouring down so hard wow. that they couldn't actually write like where they were sitting. Wow. Yeah, it was it was rainy and, and I, you know, good segue to what I wanted to talk about with them. It's, you know, Manning won the MVP because he's he's Peyton Manning. But I always took away from that Super Bowl, which was fine. But I thought a die in roads were were great and really similar to the Packers where and you see a lot of these teams on this list. The year they won the Super Bowl may have not been their best year in terms of oh, right. without question, not the best Colts team of the Peyton Manning era. I mean, exactly right. You probably say it was the year before when they went 14 and two. And that was, unfortunately, the end of the year, Tony Dungy lost his son, tragically, and and they lost to Pittsburgh in the playoffs. But that team had Edger, and this team didn't. That was the biggest difference. But in the Super Bowl, Dominique Rhodes had 21 carries, a buck 13 to score, a die in 19 carries for 77, 10 catches on 10 targets for 66 yards. Wow. So I thought those running backs should have been co-MVPs in that game. That was always my takeaway. Uh, from that Super Bowl, but they gave uh, there's no chance Peyton Manning wasn't getting Super Bowl MVP his first Super Bowl. I mean, no chance. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it is interesting. It's like the Colts, that Colts team, probably not the best Colts team of, the, of that era, but they did win the Super Bowl. And you remember that, like, it, I mean, imagine if Peyton Manning had left the Colts with no Super Bowl wins. Like, that would have been just like, oh, just devastating. Marino all over yeah. again. Yeah, absolutely. And even yeah. if he's, and like his only Super Bowl would have been the 2015 Broncos, that would have been brutal. Uh, the 05 Steelers, the team, as you uh, just mentioned, beat the Colts in the playoffs, um, certainly as a Steelers homer. And I think Ryan Wilson would agree with you. Um, you know, this, uh, this is B-Max. Is this B-Max second Super Bowl? Did he win this is his first, first one. This is his first his one. His first one. Okay, okay. Uh, this is the Bill Cowher Super Bowl, right? Yes, it is. Yep. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, our colleague Bill Cowher uh, wins his Super Bowl. Was this the was this the Seahawks Se Steelers Seahawks Super Bowl? Yeah, which is terrible which is, Super yeah. Bowl. Yes. The Jerome yeah. Bettis Super Bowl in, in Detroit. Bad right. Super Bowl. Man, that's that's the other thing too. Is like if you're the Colts, you're like, oh my God. Like we, we should have won in you know, like did you just feel like if you got to play that 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 Seahawks team, no offense to the Seahawks, but like you feel like you had a pretty good chance at winning. And look, the Steelers, that's a loaded Steelers defense in 05. It is, right. Well, and again, we talk again about this might not be their best team in that era. The year prior, they go 15-1 and one Ben's rookie year. And they lose yep. to New England in the championship game because Ben's a rookie, and that's what Bill Belichick does against rookie quarterbacks. But, For sure. yeah, I mean, the main reason – I actually struggled with this team versus putting Pittsburgh's 08 team on. I thought one of them was deserving of a spot. I slightly gave this one, this team, the edge because of a couple of things. Their offensive line was way better than it was in 08. They had Alan Fanick on this line. The running game was better. This was pre-injury Willie Parker. And the bus – on his last tires, his last tires, he's, he's still kind of hanging in there. Uh, and both defenses were about even. 08 was a, was a little bit better, but but this one was certainly nothing to slouch at. They were very good. And and really, I mean, I would say the 08 Steelers had a more impressive Super Bowl win against the Cardinals. That was a good Cardinals team. 
This game, they were aided heavily by penalty, by by slanted officiating, but their win against the Colts and how they played against the Broncos in the AFC title game really kind of gave them the nod uh, for me. And Ben, I think it's forgotten. Ben was terrible in that Super Bowl, but he was great against Denver two weeks prior, 275, two touchdown passes, a touchdown run. That's forgotten, but I thought this team was maybe more balanced and they were a very good team. Start, They were seven and five and ran the table. They were the first six seed to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, like, <coughs> excuse me, I couldn't mute myself in time. This is the run of, um, this is what started the run of the wild cards, right? right. It sort of, it culminated, I'm trying to think, um, I guess the Giants did it in 11 too, but, you know, you had the, the Steelers in 05, um, the Colts were in a, Colts won the division, I think, in 06, but then like the Giants in 07, you know, the, the Packers in 2010. And so for a really long time, it was like, Oh, you don't want to be the one seed in the playoffs, but you want to be as that white hot six seed. Um, and then it turns out that that was just like stupid. It was just a, like a maybe like an aberration or a trend or or I don't I don't know what the reason was, but it happened for several years. Um, and and yeah, I mean, I think that you know, like the the Super Bowl itself should not take away from that Steelers team and and how how good they were at number six. The aforementioned O nine Saints, the two thousand nine. Uh, New Orleans Saints. My biggest, uh, Diardo, my biggest takeaway from the Saints team is that my buddy Garrett Jernigan was, um, we were planning his bachelor party and it got planned for Super Bowl weekend. And we were either going to go to Wilmington. I don't know why these two places were our picks, uh, but I left, I flew out of Miami where that, where this game was taking place because it was between, um, you know, the Saints and the Colts, obviously. And I, I did media day, but didn't have a pass for the actual game. Did the whole week leading up to it for Fan House uh, before I was working the year before I was working at CBS, um, and we were either going to go to Wilmington, North Carolina, or New Orleans, Louisiana for the bachelor party. We chose Wilmington, and boy, did we choose poorly because we would have planned the trip mm-hmm. so far in advance that we would have been down there when the Saints won their first Super Bowl in the middle of Bourbon Street and the utter chaos of a Super Bowl victory, uh, and we would have been there for like cheap because nobody was banking on that happening, and mm-hmm. bam. Ah, dagger. It was, but it was a lovely, like, 65-degree uh, rainy weekend in Wilmington uh, <laughs> instead. So we had that going for us. But, man, this 9 team, I mean, there's so much to remember about it. Like, you know, Breeze and, um, you know, the, the Tracy Porter pick six in the Super Bowl. You have Breeze and the kid with the helmet, you know, the, the earphones on afterwards. Uh, you know, the, what it meant to New Orleans. Uh, you know, Sean Payton's uh, aggressive onside kick coming out of the second half. And then, of course, like, this is the – I think – they were tied with the Colts for last undefeated team, mm-hmm. right? Is that yeah, right? I think oh, yeah. they started thirteen and zero. Yeah. yeah, I mean they were they were a great team, and and then you also have Bounty Gate that comes out of it. So there's so much, so many different layers to this onion for the 09 Saints. Yeah, and I think you know from a historical standpoint, what sticks out is they beat three Hall of Fame quarterbacks in the playoffs. I mean that was Warner's last game. They knock him out of the game, and then they play Favre, and you know it's on the short list of best. Uh, conference title games, I remember, and then Favre throws that turnover at the end, very similar to what he what he yep. did in seven, and then they then they beat Peyton Manning in, in the Super Bowl. But there's like three underrated guys or guys from that 09 Saints team that you just forget. Uh, one of them is Will Smith, the late Will Smith. You know, he had 13 yeah. sacks, three forced fumbles that season. He's a legit like top tier pass rusher. Yeah, absolutely. And he was at the peak of his py- powers that season. I have Marquise Colston, who was. Mr. Reliable for Drew Brees, but just I don't even know if he ever made a Pro Bowl. He'll be in the Saints whatever of honor at some point, but that's about it. And then, you know, Reggie Bush, which I wanted to ask you, is his career over – did he did he underachieve? Because he has a good career, 10,000 all-purpose yards, on a Super Bowl team, contributed to it, but wasn't the leading rusher on that team. But, you know, he, he he's that guy when I go through that season, I see the name Reggie Bush. It made me pause and think, huh, is his career appreciated enough or – you know, what, what really was that? I think that he – it's a great question. I think he underachieved for what we thought of him coming out of college. And, like, the ex- – and it obviously went number two. Mario Williams went one to the Texans. But, like, what we were expecting from Reggie Bush, he probably underachieved. But ultimately, like, his career is probably underappreciated. So, I, I, I guess I, I guess I'm trying to say, like, it's, it's a – you know, it's a – like both things can be true that mm-hmm. Reggie Bush ended up, you know, won a Super Bowl, had some monstrous pat like receiving seasons, did eventually rush for a thousand yards with the was it the Lions or the Dolphins? Dolphins, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was like a, a, a very good player, 
but was never what we thought Reggie Bush would be when he was coming out of USC is like maybe like one of the greatest college running backs you'll, you'll ever see. So I think it's a great question. And I mean, like having that Super Bowl ring matters a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, the top five teams of the century, according to Brian Diardo next this summer, Paramount Plus presents the great reality escape. Let's do it. With new series. It's time to celebrate! If you get thrown in, you gotta win. And new seasons to escape to. You just became my target. I have never seen such savages. <laughs> With attitudes. Give me a damn pizza! Competitions. Survivor's ready! And guilty pleasures you don't have to feel guilty about. <laughs> Escape your everyday reality with our reality every day. This is big. Paramount Plus. Stream now. All right. I love getting into these top five teams of the century. And, I mean, look, you know, I um, I covered the next three teams. I mean, obviously, you know, we've, you know, we've, you know, I mean, we're all, we're all old enough. We've watched all these teams. Uh, but, like, all, all the teams, like, you know, I mean, I, you know, I don't know why I'm saying this. Like, I started college in 1999. So like all these teams have like, I have a pretty vivid memory of all of these teams uh, just because, you know, it's like, you know, when you, you know, you, you know, that's when you start, you know, I mean, like, I don't know, you just start, you go to Super Bowl parties, you're watching, you know, you're laying around like the you know, storm watching. I don't know. Anyway, um, the 2013 Seahawks, I mean, the, you know, we mentioned it earlier, what they did to Denver in, in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's as big an ass kicking as I've seen in a, in a Super Bowl in, in my life. And that game was a pick em. Like, and I wanted to pick the Seahawks because I've always been a big Russ guy, and I thought Seattle was going to find a way to win. Um, Pete Prisco taught me to take in the Broncos. I'll never let him live it down. He was like, Peyton Manning's going to pick apart that little cute defense of theirs. And then they just came out and put put the wood into them. And, uh, you know, as we, you and I, uh, were, we, were we talking about this recently? We were, was like, we were talking about Peyton Manning's season, 2013 season. It's like the game actually, like, looking back at that game log, like, that Super Bowl could have been a little bit closer than it was. But this – 2013 Seahawks team was like everything Pete Carroll wanted out of a, out of a football team, hard nose running smart, take care of the football quarterback um, on a rookie contract. He was dirt cheap, but he was an elite level talent and just, you know, several hall of fame defensive players, I think. Mm. Right. I, mean, yeah, well, Sherman's we, I would say so. Sherman for sure. Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas probably. probably. Yeah. 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 No, I guess. yeah. Bobby, Wag- Bobby Wagner's a hall of famer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, I, would yeah. Agree with that. So I think two, I think two for, like Earl Thomas, if he doesn't get in, it's because of like maybe some off field stuff or just the way that right. like, his career kind of ended. And just, I don't know if the, the writers treat him wrong, but like three Hall of Fame caliber um, uh, talents, you know, and Bennett, Bennett, you know, Bennett was and probably. Then, yeah, Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill. And remember, yep. Bennett and Averill, they had signed for like $5 million each because yeah. it was this weird post. Um, post lockout, post uncapped year, where like there, there just wasn't a lot of action in free agency, and the people, the cap was still snug and it hadn't started to spike out of the lockout or out of the new CDA. And so the Seahawks were able to bolster their defense with Bennett and Averill for like, I mean, I'm not kidding, five million dollars a piece, which is an obscene amount for how well they played. And you know, Cam Chancellor's on that team. Um, they, they were they were the defense, one of the greatest defenses I've ever seen play, and I think one of the greatest defenses ever, uh, the perfect Pete Carroll team. And and just, I mean, they, I, I guess we don't think about them as truck sticking everybody. They had, you know, that, of course, that, that really close game against the, uh, that was the year they Miners, had the, the tip, I think. Yeah, the Richard Sherman, Aaron Andrews interview. Yeah. Yep. No, yeah, because that was like, because going to that Super Bowl in New York, it was like, holy crap. Like Richard Sherman has exploded on the scene. He's like, you know, the, you know, the, you know, like I don't remember who called him the like. A, I mean, I'm going to air quote this, but somebody called him a thug at some point, like on some national radio channel. Um, and he was going against like Peyton Manning, who's the you know shattering records. And so there was just this like incre- incredible juxtaposition. But it was also a New York Super Bowl, so it was this like high level of attention being paid to it. Every media outlet in the world was there, expecting like you know stuff to go down like at the end of that championship game and then the Seahawks thumped them I mean it's just but this team was like a legit truck stick the entire season oh yeah yeah and 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 you know they curb stop them to steal your word they, they curb stop yeah, the steal Broncos away in the Super Bowl and uh yeah I mean that defense is on the the short list of the best ones I've seen in person I mean what 2000 Ravens or, or on if you talk about this century 2000 Ravens 02 Bucks um 08 Steelers I mean this this yeah. one's right there and um 
they were and, and really, like the other, what I was gonna say, the other thing too is like they did it. Like you, you name all those teams, and it was like this was like the latest team to like doing this in 2013 when passing offense. The numbers you were seeing from passing offenses at that point was pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, in their last eight opponents, including the playoffs, they held under 20 points. I mean, wow. that's that's pretty pretty bonkers. Four, crazy 14, yeah, 14.4 points per game allowed over the course of a 2013 NFL season is nuts. It is nuts. It is nuts. Here's so here's another stat I found odd. They gave up as many sacks as they tallied themselves. 44, wow. 44. Weird, just weird. weird stuff when you're when you're reviewing this. And I know we just talked about Reggie Bush. And actually, one of our editors, I think he now works in fantasy, and we had a we had a professional disagreement a few years ago. And I'll ask you to be the tiebreaker. So we just just talked about Reggie uh, his career. Is Marshawn Lynch in your mind a Hall of Famer? Uh yeah, it's it's definitely close, but I would I would put him in the Hall of Fame. I mean, like I don't think it's yeah. a slam dunk. I just think like he has so many moments. I mean, to me, like I don't look at it as just like like all right, here's the stats as he qualifies. It's like look at this guy's moments, look at what he did, like look at his per- personality to a degree too. I think matters and just like you know, I think about Marshawn Lynch like diving backwards in the end zone, grabbing his crotch, like the beast quake, um, just you know his off field exploits and like w- what he brought and like what you know. I mean, he giving the ball one more time and, he, and they probably have two. He probably has two rings, right? And I mean, this is, so yeah, I I, th- I think so. I would put him in, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't get it. Right. For a four year span from, I think, from like 12 to 15 or somewhere around there, 11 to 14, he averaged 1,339 yards a year, 12 rushing touchdowns a year, 16, 12 all purpose yards. And he might be the last player who, you know, was on a Super Bowl winning team and the focus of the offense was the running back. How many now times is it in the 70s? That happened all the time. In the 80s, not as much. The 90s, it was Emmitt Smith and Charles Davis. But now it's like, I mean, he was the battering ram on that team. And like you said, he has gets the ball one more time the next year he's the best offensive player on a team that wins back-to-back Super Bowls yep um and look I was always a big I had a Marshawn Lynch beast mode cup from from when he was drafted (laughs) by the by the by the Buffalo Bills so like I've always been a big Marshawn guy so I I, you know maybe I'm a little biased but I think he would definitely be in for me uh the 2019 Chiefs you know a souped up version of the 2006 Colts maybe I always say that you know, Peyton Manning, I mean, Peyton Manning, Patrick Mahomes had uh, 50 touchdowns, 5,000 passing yards in 2018, one MVP, just a ridiculous coming out party for him. I thought if you watched him play quarterback in 2019, that he was actually a better quarterback down the stretch than he was in 2018. And he just got better in Andy Reid's offense. He understood everything. Um, and then, you know, this team, like, like I said, the defense stepped up and played much better. They had Chris Jones. Uh, I believe they had the um, – at that point, they did have Tyron Matthew. Um, I still have my drops. I don't have my drop shot. But you know, they, um, you know, this is a a team that just like they were more well rounded maybe than 2018. Maybe 2018 team was great too. They just ran into Tom Brady and and they had the the, the offside situation. But um, I, the other thing you forget about this team is like they easily could have lost that Super Bowl too. And if that happens, man, it's just a weird spot for Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes right now. Yeah, and and yeah, you're right. You're 100 percent right. And and this team, the thing that always sticks out to me was they're the first team to win the Super Bowl after overcoming three 10 plus point deficits in each of their playoff games. So they had that crazy game against te- the Texans where the, they're down 24 nothing and they score what 51 straight points or they score 51 points in that game. Oh yeah, they had the Super Bowl where they were they were dead most of that game. You know the Niners had yeah. them down 20 to 10. And how about if that Garoppolo throw is a little bit more on target to Emmanuel Sanders? Now, all of a sudden, the Chiefs have the ball back. They have to score again with, like, two minutes to go. So, you're right. I mean, the Chiefs could still have have no rings, and where are they now? There's a pressure and everything. I just think – I think that team – and maybe this is what they're doing now when they let Tyreek go and they're they're trying to have a deeper receiving core. I think that was uh, Mahomes' best offense in terms of, of complementary yeah. pieces. I mean, uh, Nicole Hardman was second on the team that year in touchdown receptions. Not Hill. Wow. Not Travis Kelsey. Yes, yeah, Amy Watkins, I think, was a really sneaky – good part of that offense he had i think almost wow. receiving yards so yeah and i just, and you even look at their their running game i think they had a uh, well, Sean mccoy on his last legs and, and williams combined for about 1400 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns so it, it was an offense that didn't have a ton of stars outside of of and i don't even know if hill quite was at that point he was kind of on the precipice I, I mean i think uh the the tight end kelsey certainly was but it was just a very well-rounded offense with a good offensive line and a defense like the 06 Colts, as you said, got hot at the right time. 
Yeah, I mean, Tyreek Hill only played 12 games that year. I, I think he was – I think he – 2018, he had 1,400 yards. So I think he sure, was okay. there. For, no, just from like a – you know, so many people play fantasy that like it, the, the, the Hill secret was out. But, yeah, I mean, like he had taken that step forward. But then, you know, he gets hurt. He misses games. He misses uh, four games. And they had guys who stepped in and, and filled the void. So that certainly makes a difference. The 2016 Patriots, I mean, look, Pat's – I, I respect you. I mean, spoiler, the Pats might be on here twice. Uh, but <laughs> they went 14 and two. This is the team that beat the Falcons, who, frankly, the Falcons could have been on here too, just because of how well Matt Ryan played, had they held on and won that. Um, they dominated the Texans in the division round, dominated, beat the crap out of the Steelers in that conference championship. Uh, Tom Brady at the time, I mean, didn't like set, oh, oh this is the Deflate Gate season two, where Garoppolo had to play. Right. Yeah, and, and then Jacoby Brissett had to play, and um, and and so Brady did, Brady's numbers don't look like that explosive, but because of the you know, he missed several games. Right when you add, when you add up everything, including his postseason that year, he they were fifteen and one with Brady at quarterback, three and one without him. He had thirty five touchdowns, five interceptions. If you add up everything, um, I I believe of the Super Bowl winning teams, the 0-4 Pats in this team are the two best ones. This one was just a little bit more juiced up than that one. I think they had a little bit more star power, and their defense was just littered with with not. I don't know if they're going to have any Hall of Famers, but you know Malcolm Butler, excellent player, had that interception in the in the Super Bowl Forty Nine. Uh, you know they had other good players. Don, Donta Hightower with the big force fumble against Matt Ryan that started the comeback. But this but is a super duper thing, too, like Belichick. It's like a Belichickian defense with like yes, Jamie Collins yes. and Malcolm Butler and, and and all this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they had 14 guys that had, like, at least a sack. Nobody really had yeah. a ton that year. But the thing that, that just was crazy about them was they had so many different weapons. So, like, in the second round against the Texans, Deion Lewis has three touchdowns, and they beat him. Against the Steelers, it's Chris Hogan that goes wild with nine catches for 180 yards. And they won this Super Bowl without Gronk because he got hurt during the regular right. season. So, it was like, imagine if they had Gronk for this run. And that Steelers lost – that that stung as a as a Steeler homer back then, which I was allowed to be a homer because I wrote about him for a blog. That one hurt. <laughs> that was their best chance to win one, and yep. the Patriots just sucked the life out of them. And I remember there was a, a third down that oh, that was a, that was the that was the Chris Hogan game, wasn't it? It was that, the Chris yeah. Hogan game. But that was a very yeah, well balanced yeah. team. I mean, shoot, they overcame a twenty eight to three deficit. I mean, they <laughs> they deserve a spot for yeah. on this list if nothing else for that. This team, you couldn't kill them. They were the Terminator, and they kept coming back. 15.6 points per game allowed, best in the NFL, 14-2, and two, third in terms of points scored at 27.6 uh, points per game. I mean, just a – yeah. I mean, a, a loaded team, 6-1 to one coming into the season, and, and they delivered on that uh, surprisingly and, and hurt a lot of people, including myself, who had picked the, the Falcons to win. Uh, the 2001 loss – I'm just kidding. St. Louis Rams, a team that – um. Ironically, lost to the Patriots. Uh, yes. But, you know, we were uh, – Pete Prisco – me and Pete Prisco and um, – we were discussing your list on a, on a text thread with, with Prisco. And he was, you know, he's like – he agreed the Rams should definitely be up there if you were talking about teams as long as you didn't have to win the Super Bowl to count. 31.4 points per game scored, first in the NFL, only allowed 17.1 points per game, seventh in the NFL. And think about that, like, seventh in the NFL – 17.1 points per game in 2001. Like, that's a disparity between then and, like, 2013. You know, we were talking about what the Seahawks allowed. Kurt Warner's follow-up season to his MVP year, 36 touchdowns, 22 interceptions, which is a bunch, but he was a monster. Marshall Falk was uh, an absolute animal. Um, you know, you still had Torrey Holt. You still had Isaac Bruce. You got all these Hall of Famers. And then, like, they had a sneaky good defense, too. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they were seventh in the league in points allowed. They had a lot of, like Grant Winstrom. Again, these are guys whose careers, you know, they're not huge name players, but like Leonard Little had 14 and a half sacks that year. You know, Aeneas Williams is in the Hall of Fame. You know, Grant Winstrom had had nine sacks. So they didn't have Todd Light that was on their they, – they were missing a few pieces from their Super Bowl 34 team, and that might ultimately be what cost them. But really, yeah, I mean, this offense was still phenomenal. They were every bit as good as they were in, in 99 and 2000. Marshall Falk was great. You know, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, he's still trying to get in the Hall of Fame. I think he's from your neck of the woods, right? NC State, Torrey Holt? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a radio show with old T. Holt for a while. He's a good nice, kid. nice. Yeah, yeah. Zara Keem, another, another you know, name for some old heads that remember that team. But, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, – lo I loved Isaac Keem and Madden back then. You just, like, oh, yeah. love. And, like, Chunk handed it, too. Like, they had, yes. all, these guys, they had all these guys yeah. you could just do, like, funky stuff with in Madden for sure.
Oh, yeah. And this is a team that you – like, I was a homer. I had a Rams hat. I went to the local lids and picked one up. I mean, I was, I think, a sophomore in high school at the time. So it was a, a fun time to be an NFL fan. And, they, yeah, they were fun to play in Madden. I mean, they were culturally – and then Nelly, yes. I think, Trapper was big at that time too. So they were a fun, popular team to get into. But, yeah, I mean, that Super Bowl – I mean, no one at that time knew that they were getting Belichicked when they were getting no. Belichicked. But they, they were at Spygate. They got Spygated before Spygate was a thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and yeah. they and they I mean they outgained the Patriots by almost 200 yards in that game. I mean, they lost yep. the turnover battle zero to three. And I think the biggest indictment against March in that game was that Marshall Falk was not used enough. I think he had 21 yes. touches and, and and all of all of New England's points, except for the last field goal, were off of turnovers. All of them. Yep. So yep. I mean that yeah, that was and like if you talk to anybody from that team. Uh, they will tell you, like, I mean, Tori said this, like, on, I mean, on air. So, like, I'm not speaking about turn here, but he's like, you know, they knew every play we were running for the whole first half. And I think March, Mike March had a lot of hubris to him, right? He probably didn't adjust. Um, you know, like he said, he should have just been like, feed Marshall Falk, run the offense through him. Don't try and be, you know, your 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 greatest show on turf. Like, you don't have to be a genius. Belichick's figured out what your plan is. So change your plan and just pummel Marshall Falk down their throats. And, and force Tom Brady to generate some points because they really, like you said, they really weren't just going to, they weren't marching them down the field. That was a low scoring game. Uh, the, I believe the, the Rams were huge favorites in that, in that Super oh, Bowl. Oh, yeah, they were like 14 point favorites. Yeah, it was like 14 points because like everybody at my, at my house, yeah, it was 14 points. Everybody at my house bet on the Rams and we knew we were toast by like the third quarter. Yeah, and, and, and really, I mean, the Patriots that year, the whole the three playoff games, they scored three total touchdowns on offense. Three. Exactly. They scored yeah, one in the Super Bowl, one in the AFC Championship yep. game, one against the Raiders. It's just a, all time a upset. Far cry, a far cry from your number one team. Also yeah. a Super Bowl loser. But I mean, like, I I'm okay with this. Like the 07 Patriots at one and the 01 Rams at two. Like they didn't win the Super Bowl, but they weren't that great in the teams. And like they both ran into just sort of the worst possible case scenario in the playoffs. I mean, Everyone knows those seven Patriots ran the table until they got to the Super Bowl, beaten by Michael Strahan and Eli Manning and David Tyree and Plaxico Burris. I mean, just a, I mean, a devastating blow to the Pats because they had come out of Spygate and the investigation were like, all right, F all y'all. And the whole season, the order we talked about this was like a complaining about the sportsmanship involved. But you go back and look and like, what even that bad now in the, in the, in the grand scheme of things? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to to what you're you're talking about, how there was really no sportsmanship. So this is the craziest stat I found on the 07 Patriots. Their margin points per win that year, or their their overall plus minus the points they scored versus they allowed, was more than the allotted points they allowed. So they allowed 274 points that year. That's they wild. They outscored their opponents by a total of 315 points. That's insane. That's, That's insane. insane. Yes. It, yeah. They, they blew everybody out, out that year and left them in their wake. Brady was Brady. I mean, that was the epitome of Brady. You know, Randy Moss, was, it's crazy now to think that that they got him for pretty much nothing. I mean, everybody and, thought and he like, was washed up. And, but, like, even, like, going in, like, they didn't use him at all during the preseason and, like, they didn't show it off in training camp. They didn't show off Welker. They wanted to kind of keep it under wraps because, like, Welker was going way late in fantasy drafts. Moss wasn't going in, like, the first round. Like, he should have been the number one overall pick. And people were, like, people just didn't know. And then it comes out, it's like, oh, by the way, we have the Death Star and we're unleashing everything on them. And, then, and they did for a whole season. As you point out, they're, like, um, I'm trying to, uh, let's see, make sure I, can, I had the wrong year open. But, like, they I mean, like that defense was really good too. I mean, that's the other I, thing. They I, had I the remember the whole. They had the whole like Michael Jordan. You know, we're going to prove everybody wrong. We're going to annihilate people. I remember the Steelers had a rookie safety named Anthony Smith, and whether or not he actually predicted victory, I, I'm not really sure. I think he got goaded into it. But rest assured, as we all know, Brady went right after him on the first first drive of that yeah. game. Larry Bird's for a touchdown. He's in this rookie's face, and I, I think he ruined the kid's career. I I don't think I think he was bagging groceries somewhere the next week, but. They were. Right. I think the one weakness of their team, you know, may may have been their second. Their, their secondary was good, but their corners weren't really anything great. Ty Law was gone at that point. They hadn't gotten their next great cornerback, and they weren't. 
a great running team. I mean, they had an amazing offense. I mean, Jabbar Gaffney had five touchdowns that year. Ben Watson had six touchdown receptions that year. Right. Not to mention what Wes Walker did and what Dante Stallworth did, what Randy Moss did. They had 45 yards rushing in the Super Bowl. They relied too much on their passing game, and that allowed the Giants to, to tee off on Brady, which I think people knew at that point you could put pressure on him, but that was kind of the blueprint. They kind of copyrighted it. They, they patented it. The New York Giants. Get four patented. home. Get home. Get home with four. And, you know, you do that NASCAR package that they busted out. And, like, that was really the kryptonite for Brady. And it's a kryptonite for any quarterback. But it's like you're not only beating – you're only beating Tom Brady if you're able to do that. And that way you can hold up on the back end. Right. And, and Belichick acknowledges that he worked this team too hard. He he was yeah. – they were all hell-bent on going undefeated, leaving no doubt, and, and validating the fact that, that Deflate Gate or, or Spy Gate – Deflate Gate was later – Spy Gate yeah, yeah. did not eradicate their – they were almost defending the three Super Bowls they won earlier, you know, yeah. in the previous – you know, earlier in the decade. So, you know, but but he acknowledged – he apologized after the game and, 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 and in the locker room blamed himself, as he should have, because, yeah, he worked that team to a nub, and you could see the Giants played on a, on a higher plane. They seemed like they were moving a lot faster. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Patriots were, man, three points away from – and at the end of the game, they still almost won it when, when Brady did that on the Moss. But a I great know. team. But I wasn't going to not have them number one. They're the best team I've ever seen. They just didn't finish the job. No, I think putting the one is, is the play. And I like the, the Rams had too. I think you did the smart thing here. Excellent list as always. Uh, Diardo, always a pleasure chatting with you, buddy. And uh, make sure you go check out the list on cbsports.com. And you can also check it out on, on the Instagram. I'm telling you, they're giving it run. People yeah. are talking. The students are talking. Thanks, man. Good, ch good chat, buddy. Yep, thanks, Will. All right. Talk to you soon. For the and Brenton, we'll see you guys later. Yep, see you, Will. Have fun with dad stuff. <laughs>